Good morning. Welcome to Victoria's Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We're studying the lesson, Proofs That Abundance Is God's Will. Proofs That Abundance Is God's Will. And we are now on proof number 16. Proof number 16, and that is, God is good. God is good. And we started out with the Hebrew definition of the word good, because in modern English, the word good means moderate, mediocre, often connected with good enough. But in the Bible, there is nothing better than good. Good is top notch, highest quality. Because the word good is used to even describe God. Can you say God is moderate? God is mediocre. God is good enough, good enough to get by. Absolutely not. So in describing God, if good is one of the attributes that he carries to describe himself throughout the Bible, Old and New Testament, then We cannot say that good means moderate, mediocre. It is actually in the Hebrew, the adjective means perfect, excellent, beautiful, rich, prosperous, wealthy, bountiful, fruitful, loving, lovely, pleasant, delightful, joyful, happy, beneficial, sweet, honest, honorable, and right. Hallelujah. And so that I love the top two words, perfect and excellent. It is the top quality. God is perfect. He is perfection and he is excellence. And so then we looked in Genesis one and we saw everything God made. He said it was good. Well, he didn't say it was moderate, mediocre, good enough. He said, oh, that's just good enough to get by. We don't need something too good for man. Absolutely not. What he meant and what he said in the Hebrew, this is perfect. It is excellent. It is beautiful, rich, prosperous, wealthy, bountiful, fruitful, loving, lovely, pleasant, delightful, joyful, happy, beneficial, sweet, honest, honorable and right. And so these are the characteristics of God. And we looked at scriptures that good is the word to describe God. Psalm one nineteen sixty eight, you are good. Psalm one oh seven one, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Psalm thirty four eight, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And then we went to the book of Exodus and we looked at Exodus 33 and 34, where Moses is talking to God. God is hiding himself in a cloud. And the way I see it, it's like God, uh, like Moses gets tired of looking at the cloud and talking to God in the cloud. And it's like he's asking God to remove the cloud. And he says in Exodus 33, 18, show me your glory. And then God answered saying in verse 19, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. Did God give Moses what he asked for? Yes, because goodness is an attribute of God's glory. Praise the Lord. And then we were saying yesterday, we started looking at this part. Good is a word to describe God, who he is. And what he is, it is also a word to describe all of his works. His works are all good. His works are all good. And we saw yesterday, Psalm 107, verse 8, praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Back to Psalm 119, 68, our first scripture about God, Psalm 119, 68, you are good and what you do is good. What you do is good. His works are good. What he does is good. 
And then we saw yesterday, you cannot look at cancer and call it good. You cannot look at cancer and using the Hebrew definition of the word good. You cannot look at cancer and say, oh, isn't that cancer perfect, excellent, beautiful, rich, prosperous, wealthy. Isn't it bountiful and fruitful? Isn't it loving and lovely? Oh, isn't that cancer pleasant and delightful, joyful and happy, beneficial, sweet, honest, honorable and right? Absolutely not. No, no, no. You can't. It's ugly. Everyone knows cancer is ugly. Even if you get to look at the actual cancer, it is disgustingly ugly. It cannot, therefore, be the work of God. God does nothing ugly. Look again at Genesis 1. All of his creation, the light, the dry ground, the the trees and the fruit, and the sun, moon, and stars, the creatures of the sea, the birds, the wild animals, the livestock, and everything God made, he said himself, it was very good. You could say perfect, excellent, beautiful. That's what God made. God did not make cancer. Cancer is not from God. Never is it a work of God because it is characterized and described as ugly. It is ugly. Nothing ugly is the work of God. Nothing that's disgusting and, and that steals, kills and destroys is the work of God. You cannot look at any disease and call it good because you cannot call it perfect, excellent, beautiful, rich, prosperous, wealthy, bountiful, fruitful, loving, lovely, pleasant, delightful, joyful, happy, beneficial, sweet, honest, honorable, and right. You cannot look at any natural disaster, whether they are the hurricanes and the floods, the tornadoes that destroy and devastate land and homes, personal property, see a person's home in just a pile of rubble and say, isn't that perfect, excellent, beautiful, rich, prosperous, wealthy, bountiful, fruitful, loving, lovely, pleasant, delightful, joyful, happy, beneficial, sweet, honest, honorable, and right. You cannot look at starvation or hunger and call it any of those things. That means those things are bad and therefore they cannot be the works of God. People and especially Christians need to stop calling things that are ugly, things that are bringing death, disease, for example, or hunger or natural disasters and stop calling it the acts of God. Stop it because none of his acts and none of his works bring death. None of his works brings destruction. God is the giver of life and only life. Jesus said, I came to give life more abundantly. And that Greek word more abundantly means excessive, exceeding far over and above superior, super abundant to the highest degree. He came to give life. He never brings death. Death is not the work of God. Death is the work of the curse of sin and death. And Satan is the agent of death. God is never the worker of death or destruction or anything that will bring and produce death or destruction. God only gives life and his works are all characterized as good. And you need to understand the Hebrew word. They are characterized. His works can always be characterized as perfect. 
His works can always be characterized as excellent and beautiful and rich and prosperous and wealthy and bountiful and fruitful and loving and lovely. His works are lovely. His works are pleasant and delightful and joyful and happy and beneficial and sweet. His works are sweet and honest, honorable and right. Glory to God. So you can never say anything bad comes from God because only what is good comes from God. Psalm one nineteen sixty eight. You are good and what you do is good. Glory to God. And I liked, we talked about Psalm 34, 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Psalm 107, 8. Praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Yesterday, we looked at Psalm 145, 9. The Lord is good to who? To all. And I told you, you need to make note, mark, circle, highlight, underline the word all. Every time you see it. Especially when it's relating to God. Because he's good to all. He forgives all your sins. He heals how many? All your diseases. Jesus healed all the sick. He makes all grace abound to you so that in all things at all times, you abound in every good work. The words all and every, when it relates to God, is always regarding good things because God only does good. So then we saw he is good. And now we're looking at his works. His works are good. All of his works, everything he does is good. All of his works are characterized by the word good, which actually means perfect, excellent, beautiful, rich, prosperous, wealthy, bountiful, fruitful, loving, lovely, pleasant, delightful, joyful, happy, beneficial, sweet, honest, honorable, and right. Praise the Lord. And then yesterday we looked at Psalm 31, 19. How great is your goodness. So God is goodness and which you have stored up. So he stores up goodness. God stores up goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you. So goodness is stored up for you. If you fear God, you need to believe that. You need to believe that goodness is stored up for you. Goodness is stored up for you. Not bad things. Goodness is stored up for you by God for those who fear God. How great is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you. Now, he doesn't just store it up in heaven and hold it there. No, no, no. It says, which you bestow in the sight of men, which you bestow in the sight of men, which you bestow in the sight of men. God gives it out, dishes it out in the sight of men. Hallelujah. Glory to God, which you bestow in the sight of men on those who take refuge in you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then we looked yesterday at Psalm 65, four, we're looking at his works. Now, God only does good and only gives good gifts. All right. God only does good and he only gives good gifts. Never bad, never anything ugly. That means never any sickness, never any disease, never any starvation or hunger, never any lack or poverty, because good means rich, prosperous and wealthy. So lack and poverty are not the description of what God gives. Bountiful and fruitful. That means it can't be lacking. It's bountiful. It is fruitful. Everything God does, everything God gives 
is good. It is perfect, excellent, beautiful, rich, prosperous, wealthy, lovely, delightful, etc. So God only does good and only gives good gifts. Psalm 65, 4. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house. Psalm 34, 10. Psalm 34, 10. But those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. No perfect, excellent, beautiful, rich, prosperous, wealthy, loving, lovely, pleasant, delightful, joyful, happy, beneficial thing. Those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Is a car a good thing? Is it beneficial? Yes. And I could say a vehicle, whether you've got a truck or an SUV, I mean a vehicle. Is a vehicle a good thing? Yes. Yes, it is because it is beneficial. It is, it is helpful. It is back to it. Uh, it is perfect, excellent, beautiful, rich, prosperous, wealthy, bountiful, fruitful, loving, lovely, pleasant, delightful, joyful, happy, beneficial. So right there, the word beneficial, a car or a vehicle, truck or SUV, it is a beneficial thing. So Psalm 3410 says, those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. You know, that is an excellent scripture promise. If you need a car or anything else that would be beneficial to you. If you need anything that is beneficial, then this is a good promise. Those who seek the Lord lack no good thing, no beneficial thing, no beneficial thing. Those who seek the Lord lack no good thing, lack no beneficial thing. Praise the Lord. So anything you need that would be beneficial to you, you take this promise in Psalm 3410 and believe God for those beneficial things that you need, because this promise says those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Hallelujah. And that goes right with Psalm 8411, Psalm 8411, no good thing. You could say beneficial thing. Does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless? No good thing. No beneficial thing. Does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless? Psalm 85, 12, Psalm 85, 12. The Lord will indeed give what is good Perfect, excellent, beautiful, rich, prosperous, wealthy, bountiful, fruitful, loving, lovely, pleasant, delightful, joyful, happy, beneficial, sweet, honest, honorable, and right. The Lord will indeed give. The Lord will indeed give. The Lord will indeed give what is good. Everything good, everything perfect, excellent, beautiful, rich, prosperous, wealthy, bountiful, fruitful, loving, lovely, delightful, pleasant, happy, joyful, God and beneficial. God will indeed give. You do not need to question if God will give you these things. The Lord will indeed. You can say, Cherry, would God give me a good car? The Lord will indeed give what is good. Psalm 85, 12. Will God give me a nice house? God, the Lord will indeed give what is good. Will the Lord give me a good job? The Lord will indeed give what is good. Will the Lord give me good clothes? The Lord will indeed give what is good. If it's perfect, excellent, beautiful, Rich, prosperous, wealthy, bountiful, fruitful, loving, lovely, pleasant, delightful, joyful, happy, beneficial. 
sweet, God will indeed give. The Lord will indeed give. Yes. Yes. The answer is yes, yes, and yes. The Lord will indeed give what is good and our land will yield its harvest. The Lord will indeed give what is good. What is good for you, the Lord will indeed give. If it's pleasant, lovely, delightful, joyful, happy, rich, prosperous, wealthy, bountiful, fruitful, sweet, excellent, perfect, beautiful. Yes, the answer is yes. The answer is yes to you all the time because it is written in scripture. It is eternal. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass away, but my words, Jesus said, will never pass away. This is the eternal word of God. It is the eternal answer of God to all your questions. Will God give you something good? Yes, yes, and always yes, because Psalm 85, 12 says, the Lord will indeed give what is good. Always the answer is yes. Hallelujah. And I'll give you more scripture proof for that. Some Christians think that God sometimes says no. The Bible never says God says no to you regarding his promises, regarding things that are good, because the Lord will indeed give what is good. But let me show you. I'm going to jump ahead into the New Testament and show you this scripture. Second Corinthians, second Corinthians one twenty. Second Corinthians one twenty. 20 for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen, that means so be it is spoken by us to the glory of God. And actually, if you go back to verse 19, actually back to verse 18, sometimes you know, people think God sometimes says yes, sometimes he says no. Verse 18, Second Corinthians 1, 18 through 20. And it says, but as surely as God is faithful, our message to you is not yes and no. You don't say yes and no. No. Verse 19. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by me and Silas and Timothy was not yes and no, but in him, it has always been yes, always yes. Hallelujah. Verse 20 for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes, always yes. In Christ, verse 19, the answer has always been yes. His promises are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen, the so be it, let it be so is spoken by us to the glory of God. So you see, God's answers are not no, if it's regarding his promises, his promises are always yes. And go back to. Psalm 85, 12, the Lord will indeed give what is good. His answer, if it's a good thing, is always yes, yes, and yes. Praise the Lord. Now look at Psalm 103. We're back in Psalms. Psalm 103, verse 5. Who satisfies your desires with bad things? No, with good things. Things, things that are perfect, excellent, beautiful, rich, prosperous, wealthy, bountiful, fruitful, loving, lovely, pleasant, delightful, joyful, happy, beneficial, precious, sweet, honest, honorable, and right. Those are the things that he will satisfy your desires with. I've said before, People will sometimes say, well, God will meet your needs, but he doesn't give you all your desires. There is not one scripture that says that that's a lie. People have made up accusing God of something that is not good. 
again and again and again, he satisfies your desires with good things. Back to Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart, the desires of your heart. And there again, if you, if you're delighting in the Lord, looking at that scripture again, Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord. That's why he can satisfy your desires. Because when you are delighting in the Lord, what does delighting in the Lord mean? This is what God told me. Desiring to please him. When you delight yourself in the Lord, you desire to please him. You love him and you want to please him. Well, when your heart is desiring to please the Lord, then your desires for other things are also balanced in that and they are good. So a desire for a house, a car, a motorcycle, a boat, a camper, motorhome, those things are good too. Because they're balanced in your desire to love and please God. Praise the Lord. So again, Psalm 103, 5, he satisfies your desires with good things. Well, join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.